a crazy stat finally works out in Auburn's favor. In the world full of podcasts, he's the undisputed heavyweight champion of hot takes, an Auburn sports homer, master of the bug, and message board legend. Get your buttons buttoned and your hats flattened because the Top Button Podcast is about to kick off. And you don't want to miss your courtside seat. Now, here's your host, Charlie Five. Yes, sir. We're back. It's another episode of the Top Button Podcast. Happy Monday. Uh, I'm your host, Kyle Rush, a.k.a. Charlie Five, and we're ready to get after it. Get this week kicked off. It's Vandy week, but we're still going to talk a little bit about this Kentucky win and, and how much it means and, and dive into the Hugh Freeze post-game press conference. Came up with a crazy stat uh, that was circulating last week, and finally – uh, it, it worked out in, in Auburn's favor. So we're going to jump into that before we get started. We got to give a shout out to our, uh, mybookie.ag. Use coupon code next round for a double up deposit bonus. Give them 200 bucks. They're going to give you another 200 back on top to play with. You got the huge sports book, all kinds of betting lines that you can choose from. Uh, tons of fun. Uh, I think I got to check and see what the line is. I think it, uh, Auburn opened at a five and a half point favorite against Vandy and it's moved up to maybe a six. Uh, so Money's coming in, uh, obviously, on Auburn. Lines moving in that direction. So uh, let's see what happens. Uh, sign up today. Definitely take advantage of that double up dep uh, deposit bonus, mybookie.ag. So uh, I want to go through the Hugh Freeze post game press conference. Uh, we've done that in the last couple of weeks. And it's really fun to kind of hear Hugh talk about it. There's a crazy stat. It started circulating last week. Uh, it, it caused a lot of discussion uh, about Auburn and how kind of further, uh, I guess, cements the idea that Auburn's maybe not quite as far off a, as we think. Uh, so I'm going to let him talk about how happy he is uh, for, for the team, obviously, and then he goes into this stat, and then we're going to break it down in just a second. Oh, yeah, well, just to see them happy and, and their, their continuous hard work to be gratified with the feeling of an SEC win on the road uh, for coaches. Um, particularly when you go through the type of losses we have. I don't, I don't know. I saw a stat this week that was kind of like one of the craziest metrics I've ever seen of seven teams that are averaging over six and a half yards a carry and, and allowing five yards or less on defense, and we're one of those seven. And the combined record of the other six is like 36 and four. And uh, so, you know, whether it's been the lack of confidence or us – not believing um, in ourselves because of our youth enough or, or obviously turnovers played a role in some of those but you know the hope is you come and win um, one on the road that it uh, grows your confidence for sure for the next time because it's not going to get any easier you know with the teams we're playing and so yeah he was very close as far as what that stat is on the spot I know it's tough but only seven teams, it's even more impressive. It's not six and a half yards of rush. It's six and a half yards of play. So only seven teams gain over six and a half or average six and a half yards of play and give up less than five yards per play, not five yards per rush, five yards per play. So that counts, obviously, the passing game and uh, the running game. So Auburn's one of only those seven teams, and then you – heard the record of the other six it's it's crazy 36 and four I think he's right on that by the way uh if not it's within a few games so it doesn't it's, it doesn't really matter in other words if you're doing these things typically it leads to winning football so there's just a few things obviously that that Auburn's doing whether it's like he said lack of confidence uh so he's blamed the coaching staff as far as calling the right plays Things, things like that, that, those are the things that are keeping Auburn from winning because their on-the-field product is get, is they, is close. It's close. I mean, this Kentucky game, so the stat was, again, uh, gaining six and a half yards of play. Auburn gained 6.55 yards per play against Kentucky. Giving up less than five yards per play, they gave up 4.1 yards per play. So there, there's the metric right there. And it yielded a pretty dominating win. I mean, honestly, uh, people are like, oh, they only won by 14 points. You know, Auburn only had the ball four times in the second half. That that game was so quick. Like, that second half went by so fast. There's so few possessions in that game. 
So four time four times in the second half, that's twice a quarter. I mean, he just the 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 clock just melts now. Uh, so so yeah, it could have been it could have been way worse. It could have been way worse because they were doing whatever they wanted to, especially in that second half. So I think it's it's awesome to get this win because you're already very close as far as you know doing the right things that you usually yield winning football. Uh, so if you can continue that, and it doesn't get any easier, but if you can continue that, you can maybe go on a little run here and salvage the season and sort of build some momentum uh, going into the offseason. So here he talks about Jarquez and, and how much it means to him to see uh, Jarquez have the success and, and, you know, crazy that Jarquez kind of blamed himself for last week. But let's hear what Hugh, Hugh had to say about Jarquez and his performance. Uh, I feel good uh, now that we won. Um, I'm sure I'll uh, I'll get some rest tomorrow, hopefully, when we get back. Jarquez, uh, he's been that way, was so apologetic after the Missouri game, sent a text to all of us offensive coaches saying I, I, I didn't carry us tonight. And uh, uh, just to see him have that kind of success uh, after feeling the way he did you know, last week for a kid that's worked as hard as he has is uh, it's gratifying. It's got to be gratifying, man. Uh, for, first off, for him to blame himself last week, uh, they did try to focus. A lot of people were watching this game and they're like, see, I told you we should have been giving Jarquez the ball. Well, they tried to last week too. It just didn't work. Uh, and, and that's him saying, you know, letting us know, you know, Jarquez put the blame on him. Like y'all gave me the ball and we couldn't get it done. Even though, you know, the offensive line struggled, Missouri really whipped us up front. Uh, it's just, it's gotta be gratifying is the word is the right word, uh, to see everything that Jarquez has done for this program, everything that Jarquez has done for Auburn, the many times Jarquez could have made a ton of money by going to Ole Miss this off season. They wanted him bad. They lost Quinshawn Judkins. Uh, and I I'm sure there was a ton of tampering going on. He never went into the portal, but he could have, uh, and, and he, again, he would have made a lot of money. And being a part of it, you know, a, you know, I know it's not a, it, it's it's leaving Auburn, but probably been a part of a, a very explosive offense. Uh, but he's leading the SEC in rushing. Uh, he just went off for 278 yards, which is the uh, fourth most rushing, to, uh, fourth most rushing yards for an Auburn back. Uh, up to 3,000 yards, uh, over 3,000 yards career. And if he has a strong uh, four games, and if we were to get to a bowl game, five games. Uh, he could really cement himself as some uh, among some of the Auburn greats. So, obviously, it's it's very he's just he's just the guy you want on your team, man. He's just a guy you gotta you gotta have, and, and, and you wish you had uh, twenty two of them on both sides of the ball. Guys that just come to work, work hard, uh, don't make excuses, take the blame when even when they probably shouldn't take the blame. Uh, it's just uh, it's just good to see him actually finally get a chance to break through and go off on a really good defense. On a really good defense, so he was asked, uh, and I and we kind of discussed this. Like, what was the what's the what was the change? Has anything really changed? Uh, to you were down ten. Uh, usually that yields uh, <laughs> disaster, or usually your team fold, or I guess I don't want to say folds, but because well, they've been playing good football, but they just don't have that quite that belief quite yet that they can come back. So they get down 10 early. Did anything change from last week uh, to this week? No, really didn't. Um, you know, our team just keeps fighting. I just think we're so young and I don't know, the belief that you're going to find a way to win instead of find a way to lose is something that you have to experience. And hopefully now that we've experienced finding a way to, to win, that that will carry over and, and we'll grow from it. Totally could not agree more. There, there. We have been finding ways to lose games instead of finding ways to win. And and there were times in this game Saturday where Auburn could have found a way to lose. Uh, you turn it over uh, down ten, I believe. Uh, you got to before you even really start scoring uh, and. But you force them to punt. You you do you you give them opportunities, multiple opportunities in the beginning of that game to really blow it open. They you had a you had you gave them some opportunities in the beginning of that game to where they could have maybe put the game away. 
if if they would have just been able to score some points, your defense never gave up. And golly, the young guys making plays. There's a play, uh, and, and I mentioned it, but I want to. I almost want to. I'm probably going to clip it and post it and pin it to my to pin it to my profile on on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it, where they throw a ball out to a running back or maybe it was a tight end or, or somebody in the flat, and it's one on. It's a check down. It's one on one with Caleb Harris. And, and there is nobody around. It's just Caleb Harris and this one one person. And Caleb Harris is a true freshman. And I'll be daggummed if he did not put his face mask through that guy's soul and stop him dead in his tracks. True freshman. We're not talking about uh, an ankle tackle and, and the guy falls for three or four yards. We're talking about I'm going to take your manhood as a true freshman. And he did it. I, and he's made play after play like that. It's just that's the kind of stuff, man, these young guys finding ways to win. Hey, Jay Crawford last week made the same play against Missouri. Remember, he tipped the ball. It was almost the exact same play underneath coverage, uh, timed it perfect. Last week he tipped it up and he couldn't make the play. This week he makes the play. He makes the interception. Finding ways to win. A lot of young guys, and, and, and I'm telling you, man, you get that confidence. Auburn, and the, the announcer said it, Auburn's going to be a dangerous team, I think, uh, on this back half of the season. So, uh, again, nothing changed, just trying to – just finally figuring out a way to win. Uh, Alex McPherson obviously came back. We talked about him on the live show last night. Hugh speaks about him and, and how big it is for him to be able to be back uh, a little bit more healthy than he has been. Obviously not back to full strength, but let's hear what he has to say about Alex McPherson. And that kid's been through it, and he's still, you know, not back to 100%, but um, felt confident with the week he had and was really solid, obviously, on the extra points. And, um, you know, and had enough leg for that one. Um, and he didn't miss a single kick in practice on uh, Tuesday or uh, Thursday. So we, we're, we're glad to have him back, glad he's in a healthier spot. Yeah. You cannot put a value on a a kicker at the level of Alex McPherson. Uh, and for him to go through what he's gone through uh, and it sort of be something that comes comes out of the blue, something you're really unprepared for, uh, luckily, luckily uh, you had the Towns Magoo situation where he's a hometown kid that you could go out and get right there uh, at the last minute and bring him in because – Man, Auburn could have been even in a more world of hurt. Even though Towns has struggled from, uh, you know, from the place kicking standpoint, he's been phenomenal kicking off. He's kicked one out of bounds, but man, he just booms it through the back of the end zone or, or into the end zone. So that really helps, uh, really helps your your coverage team when you either a uh, it's going to be a touchback every single time, or b. They're going to have to bring it out of the end zone, so they're already trying to make up ground when they're when they're when they're receiving the kickoff. So, uh, Alex being back uh, and hopefully continuing to regain his strength, regain some weight. Hopefully, he's got his situation under control because uh, I think the team probably feels a lot more confident. You call plays different. You 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 um you manage the game different when you know you have a solid kicker back there that. He's – I don't even – I'm not even going to hold that miss against him uh, because he was having to do more than his body could physically do, and he had enough leg to do it. But it just like any time when you're trying to juice something, uh, you could possibly, you know, change your mechanics or something like that when typically he's got plenty of leg with his regular mechanics because of his dropping all that weight, having to, you know, give it that extra, you know, get up to get it out there uh, – Changed some things and he missed it left. But man, it's just so great to see him back um, from on a personal level, just to see him, you know, on a human level, just to see him be able to recover from losing, you know, 50 pounds plus pounds uh, in the offseason to to being able to get back and get after it and, and do what he loves. Um, I know that uh, that on a personal level, it's great. And then on a uh, football level, having a steady kicker is worth its weight in gold. So definitely, definitely good to have him back. And you can see, you can feel it. Uh, you can feel it from Hugh at, at how uh, important Alex McPherson is to this team. 
uh, he asked about the uh, defensive stop and, and how the, at the end of the game and how clutch that was. Uh, and I, I love what he had to say. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because that that uh, even even I was on the headsets. You know, I don't say much uh, to them. I try not to, but. Um, I was just like, man, make them earn everything and, and milk this clock as much as you can. And not only do they do that, but end up getting a stop with a pick, which that play by Ken Lee was because, you know, we were man coverage and he motioned all the way over and all the way back. And you very seldom see, you see it stop some, but you don't, I mean, to get there and pick it, it was pretty phenomenal. Yeah, great play, unbelievable play. The biggest thing about that play, in my opinion, is the clutch aspect. Find, that's That goes back to finding a way to win. We talked about this last night, uh, and Hugh emphasized how difficult that play is, kind of like I did uh, as well on the live show last night, being in man coverage, having to motion across, and then, honestly, the motion back where, he, that he's run, where the receiver's running back across the formation, that's honestly his route. I mean, let's just be honest. That That is really his route. I mean, and he's running full speed. So he's running full speed unimpeded. Kay and Lee has to run full speed and weave his way through linebackers and make sure and be looking at the receiver. Uh, so he's not even looking straight ahead. He's he's sort of looking out of his peripheral at people he could be running into, and then he jumps the route and makes the play. I mean, that's just clutch. That's finally being able to make a clutch play. And it's great for Kay and Lee, too, because – He's been picked on a little bit. It's great to see him actually uh, be able to make a game-changing play. I like that. I like the aspect of Hugh saying, "I don't talk to the defensive coach as much in the headset." <laughs> that's that's interesting because, like, he's you know he's an offensive guy. So what does he really have to to offer? But making them earn every yard, I think they did that. I mean, they got the ball. Uh, they got the ball there um, with you know a fair amount of time left, and they. I think when Auburn got the ball back, uh, there was only a couple of minutes left. So, like, even even if they would have scored, Auburn made them have to drive and use so much time that it would have been hard for uh, Auburn to get the ball, uh, run whatever they got to run, and, and they force a punt and then get it back and then go back down and score like it. They made them earn every single yard, and the you know the interception was great. But you don't don't forget those two plays prior. Do not forget those two plays prior where they had two cracks at it, and that defensive line stood tall. Eugene Asante made a uh, highlight reel tackle, jumping through a wide open hole that the guy could have almost walked through. Uh, he, it's like a sixth sense. He he felt he felt the hole open, and, and Eugene hit it and hit the running back, and he went backwards. Didn't it wasn't one of those hit, again hits and go forward. It was a hit and you're going backwards. Uh, so just big time clutch play and and those are the kind of things you got to feel. You got experience, so you know you can do it when it's on when when it's on the line. So last thing we're going to talk about is make everybody mad before we get off. Talk about Peyton Thorn. <laughs> uh, that Peyton honestly uh, had a pretty solid game after the first little shaky start. He finished really strong. Let's hear, hear Hugh talk about it. Um, you know, we were we we called things he was really comfortable with that we felt like we could protect at times. You know, um, the interception, um, truthfully, uh, the route should have been shaved back to the ball better. And so, you know, I know it always shows up on the quarterbacks and everything, and sometimes it is them. But um, I thought that route could have been run different. But we're playing a lot of young kids, and they 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 do that sometimes. And, but I thought Peyton tonight, other than the last play before half, was a really, really solid and um, thought he played winning football for the most part. Peyton starting off the game shaky. He was uh, 5 of 10 with an interception. So uh, I know a lot of people. Uh, again, I told I told you guys I unplugged, So, but I did still get messages. I did see them, especially on Twitter. Uh, but I didn't want to interact. I was not. I'm, I'm not going to interact. I'm just going to let this thing play it play out the way it did. A uh, ton of negativity, and, and you know, understandably so at that point in time. Ten started off five of ten with an interception, finished fifteen of sixteen. That's pretty daggum good. That's good against uh, air. Uh, and I think the first nine. I think after the interception, he completed his first nine passes in a row. So. 
there were times where he played really well that they kept the game uh, sort of, I guess they kept it within him. They they didn't they didn't really call things that they felt like he couldn't execute. They they, they called the things he was comfortable with. And I know he said that, you know, Peyton should have thrown it up there at the end of the half, and, and maybe he should have. But I, I know that that guy, that guy got in there so fast. He got in there so fast, and, and I know it's tough, but I thought he played pretty solid football. And that's, that's really all you need out of him. Uh, and that's really all – I mean, that's kind of what he is. If you, if you can if – can, if, if things are going well and, – and, and there was a time where things were not going well. But if things are going well, Peyton can, can distribute the ball – uh, and they were getting the ball out quick, and the offensive line was holding up a little bit. I know he got sacked, uh, you know, a fair amount of times, but uh, you know, I, I thought he played obviously good enough to win, uh, good good enough to uh, control the game, and to finish fifteen out of sixteen uh, after an interception is is pretty. I mean, that's got to make you feel a little bit better. That's got to make you feel a little bit better about the whole narrative around when things go bad, Peyton goes bad. Uh, he was able to kind of pick himself off, uh, pick himself up after that after that interception, uh, and play some solid football uh, towards the end. And that's kind of what we need out of him for the rest of the year. Now I, we got to figure out this wide receiver thing. I, I know it's youth, but uh, running wrong routes or not running routes the way that they're coached. Um, got to get that figured out. I don't exactly know who that was, uh, but we'll we'll look into that and see exactly which receiver that was that made the. Um, you know, ran the – didn't shave it off enough or whatever, you know, the terminology that Hugh used. Got to get that cleaned up because, uh, again, the margin of error is, is, is really thin. So, another, I hope you guys have enjoyed this weekend, enjoyed the win. Um, hopefully we got – we're going to have way more to talk about. Hugh has his press conferences today. Uh, we'll kind of start shifting gears and, and looking at the Vandy game and where Auburn can uh, – what, how, how that matchup is going to go and, and where Auburn can succeed and what they got to watch out for. So, guys, I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, you need to subscribe to thebarnauburn.com for only a dollar for just a little bit longer. Uh, that, that promo is only going to go on for just a little bit longer. Uh, and then for your first month, only a dollar. Best investment you can make. Uh, and then, obviously, if you like this video, like it. If you like this channel, subscribe to it. We're going to be back every single day. Every single day this week, uh, on the weekend, doesn't matter. We're going to be back talking Auburn, booging out, and doing what we got to do uh, to make it happen. So, guys, I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening. It's another episode of the Tom Button Podcast. Stay buttoned. Thanks for listening, and drive home safely.